Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, We're the Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. And I'm Dustin. And here is our non-spoiler review for The Creator. As a future war between the human race and artificial intelligence rages on, ex-Special Forces agent Joshua is recruited to hunt down and kill the Creator, who has developed a mysterious weapon that has the power to end the war and all of mankind. So I'm sure by now you have seen the trailer for the Creator, and we will be referencing to the trailer, so if you find that to be a bit spoilery, um, bookmark this page or save the video, save it to your watch later list, and then come on back. Unless you're okay with us referring to the trailer, then by all means, stay. Uh, this is a film directed by Gareth Edwards, who is the same director that uh, directed Rogue One, which we both really love. Mm -hmm. And something that Gareth Edwards has always done is that he really does um, sci-fi very well. He was able to bring the world of Star Wars to a more gritty kind of real Earth kind of feel. And it really brought this world of science fiction and far-fetched fantasy into, you know, something that we're like, I can relate to this. And that is something that he actually did very well in the what we saw in, in the trailer. It looked like a very gritty, futuristic world where there's this conflict between AI and humans. Mm. And it really seemed like this was going to be a very deep story. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, he has definitely built a very immersive world. And I find that really refreshing in a world where, not just in your TV shows, but in your movies where a lot of times it's we're seeing an, an extension of an existing IP already, um, whether it's a reboot or a prequel or a an, sequel or, an or whatever. Or adaptation on a book right. or something. Yeah, seeing something completely new was very refreshing and very just made you want to sit down and be like, ooh, what am I in for? when we have this whole new world that we get to explore. Yeah, so this story is written by Gareth Edwards, and um, I it's a very grand story that I feel, at times as I was watching this, that I felt there was a need, a desire for me to want to know more about not just our lead character, John David uh, Washington's character, Josh's story, because it really mostly focuses on him, um, but there are other characters, Gemma Chen's character, Ken Watanabe's character, that I really would have liked to know a little bit more about. And the movie, because the pacing was actually pretty steady, um, they weren't afforded uh, time to give these characters a little bit more of an arc which uh, and a backstory, which I would have liked to see. Um, but I, I will say, I, I feel like, yes, the pacing was good, but this isn't a, like, a, how do I say it? I would say this is the definition of like a slow burn movie with a really great third act. And the thing is, there's just this huge world that we would love to see developed. Something that both Wendy and I were talking about in the Drive Home was that you know this would have been really, really good as like a mini series or something where we could have been able to spend, you know, up to three to four hours being able to develop this war, be able to develop the people that are involved in the war, each side of the war to where you can see, you know, you can see the human perspective of it, you can see the AI perspective, you can build sympathy for these characters, mm -hmm. but there's so much material here and it's only, we, the movie's only like two hours and 10 minutes, minutes or and something 13 like minutes that, yeah. with credits. So I feel when I was sitting down in the, um, in the theater, I felt like they sped through so much stuff and it actually there were a lot of moments where I'm like wait a second I think they cut a big chunk out here and I feel like Gareth Edwards would have been able to bring this world to life a lot better if either he had a lot more time with this or if he would have been able to make multiple ser multiple episodes to a series to where you really could have just dove into these characters. Yeah, really fully flesh out the story because he was limited to a specific, not a specific, but you know, you're in a movie, you're kind of tied down to some kind of a runtime. And I think in a series, yes, you do have a runtime as well, but at the same time, you can make it, you know, two episode mini series, three episode mini series, put it on Apple TV Plus. It's great. But I will say, having said that, this visually, it's so stunning. Like every single frame was so freaking beautiful that it would have been a shame to like ha not have seen this on an IMAX screen. We saw it on an IMAX screen, so it, it was spectacular. The sound was great, visual design, everything was great. I want to kind of um, touch on what you said earlier about the human connection mm -hmm. of it all and, and how certain characters we would love to get more backstory. So the overall plot is that 
there's a war between the humans and the AIs. There are a specific group of people who are like, no, we don't like the AI because there was something that happened to make them go. They're dangerous. They have too much power. We have to ban all of them. Um, and then no, there not just is ban all of them. Get rid of them. Destroy all of them. Yeah, no AI. And period. anyone who supports them. And then there is another group of people, and I'm trying to keep it really, really vague so you guys can kind of like experience it in the story. So if you've already seen the movie or, or if you've read more into the plot, you're like, how come she's not mentioning this? I just want to make sure we are trying to stay as spoiler free as possible. So there is a certain group of people that are fine with AI. They have sympathy for AI. They are okay with living amongst AI. They don't find the AI to have any sort of ill intent. Um, so those people that kind of are okay with the AI, unfortunately fall victim to essentially this war that is happening. Um, so what I would have liked as far as human connections go, we saw the emotions of the people who were fine with the AI, who were living with the AI, right? Yeah. And coexisting with them. But we didn't really get what people are like, like not military, everyday people who are against the AI, ban the AI. Well, I wanted to see it from there, just to have the perspective from both sides. I felt like we were missing that. So when the story is kind of overall about this war to be like, AI bad, destroy them all, you, at times I felt like I couldn't really connect with their cause, like I understood it, but I didn't connect it with it because there was no, nothing ironically human connecting me to that part of it. Yeah, and something that I think was also a little jarring was the fact that they kind of did some timeline jump. Yes, they did. To where it was a little bit more difficult to start feeling sympathy for some a character that they're now telling you this part of their story. Mm -hmm. I feel like if we would have had, say, like a three-part miniseries, you could have had the beginning, the how the war started, how all of these emotions got mm -hmm. to where they were and got so far to where it got to a breaking point. Yes. Then you actually have the war and then you have the end of the war. Mm -hmm. And being able to see that progression a little bit more and being able to see the development of both of these sides, I mean, that's actually a good thing to say about the movie and the world that Gareth Edwards presented and created is that we're not going, oh, this is so boring. We're going, we want more. We would love to be able to connect with these characters a little bit better because it is 100% original. So yeah. it is really cool to see these characters, to see this world. And the way that he even started it, um, kind oh, of like the it epilogue. It started strong. It started really strong. Really I'm strong. like, okay, they're kind of changing our history a little bit to make it so where AI could be a more prevalent force in the more recent future. And I just was really into that. But then we skip ahead. And then there's some timeline jumping. And then I'm kind of like, I got to the point to where I was, where these things were happening to certain characters. And I was not invested enough mm -hmm. in the story, in the world, or in the war to really have these emotional punches. Like, I think if these would have had the exact same moments, but we had more time to develop, I think these uh, moments in the movie would have just packed a much bigger punch. Yeah. And to on that note too, um, this is sci-fi war film. There's definitely like emphasize on, the, I mean equally, but like the war. It's he, Gareth Edwards doesn't shy away from the brutality of war, um, whether it's the you know soldiers or the civilians or the AI. They really show you all of that. Um, and I think at times it made me feel like I had to disconnect. Mm -hmm. from it to because it was so brutal to watch and this is why I don't do I don't I don't usually do well with with war films like I I, I, I can appreciate them for what they are but I I think um, just for me it's as a, as a personal taste thing like I would rather read about a war than like watch a war being putting it in a sci-fi world makes it a little bit easier to have that like you kind of can dissociate and be like okay but at the same time the way he did it and as you guys watch you will see just how much the destruction and and innocent bystanders you know um being victims of of war that that i would say kind of um made me feel like i wanted to disconnect even more uh and then with that i will say who pulled me really pulled me in with the look performances was great with all these actors. Um, but 
the one person that surprised me, and I knew it was gonna turn out this way, is the actress playing Elfie, Madeline Yuna Voyes, I think, and Voyles. Sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. She is young, but she has a very commanding presence. Her emotions and her arc, I think she had more arc than anybody else yeah. in, that, in, in that entire movie. Where she got to at the end of the film, I felt like if I was able to like connect with them more, I definitely would have shed some tears because she was that good. And that's the thing too, that when the emotional part came out near the end, there was, there was this moment where I'm like, I should be, I really should, I felt like I should be crying a lot more, like I should be a lot more attached because her performances were amazing and every time she was on stage, on screen, she did a great job on pulling you in. Mm. But still, we did not have that time to actually develop that attachment. So there still was a little bit of disconnect when these emotional moments started to happen. And I wish we would have had more time. Yeah. Which is why we kind of refer to at the beginning of our review to talk about, um, for this movie, putting it out as in film versus like a series, like what would have served it better. Um, and obviously it's it's out as a film. It is visually absolutely stunning. We are going to go ahead and give you guys our um, rating for the movie. Our rating system is in the video description below in case it's your first time watching one of our movie reviews. I really, really appreciate this being a very original story written by the director visually stunning performances like he cast all you know or the casting people you know cast all the right actors to bring in just top tier performance uh would have liked to see more from various characters such as Gemma chan ken watanabe it's a very it's a very ambitious film, visually stunning. If you're gonna go and see it, highly recommend it in IMAX because it becomes very immersive, so you can fully you know enjoy this like world that er uh, Gareth Edward built. I wish I was able to connect with it more, but I really still do like the story. I still do think it's a good film, and I'm gonna give this movie a matinee. It. I'm actually right on the same page with this. I thought the performance was great. The special effects were great. I wish we had we were able to connect a little bit more with the characters and this war and this original storyline and his image of the future seemed very tangible and very realistic. I just wish we could have been able to connect a little bit more. So I'm going to give it a matinee as well. And there you have it. That is our non-spoiler thoughts on the creators. Let us know your thoughts once you've seen the film in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.